This week I want to take you to Long Island, about 28 miles away from Manhattan, to Eisenhower Park. The park was part of a golf club all the way into the 1940s, but then, in 1949, it became the Nassau County Park, and then, in 1969, was renamed Eisenhower Park, after Dwayne David Eisenhower, the 34th President of the United States. Eisenhower came from a poor family, however, from a young age, he grew up with strong values and eventually entered West Point Military Academy. And although he left the school without major accomplishments, well, some. I mean, the fact that he didn't get kicked out, as he broke many times the rules. But later on, he will gain a very good reputation for training troops and planning. In World War II, he rose to the position of the Supreme Allied Commander, and after the war, not only did he become the president of Columbia University, but he also stepped into the shoes of the Supreme Allied Commander once more, this time for NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, which had, and still does today, the task of protecting all of its member countries. Eventually, he became the President of the United States from 1953 until 1961, therefore, a remarkable biography. The park itself is very big, in fact, bigger than Central Park that we looked at on this channel. And there is lots of things to do here. Maybe you would like to just relax and take a stroll through its vast open spaces. Or play some golf, as in this section of the park. Or make your way to this section of the park right here, where there is lots of activities. For example, fun playgrounds for the kids roller skating ring and track, basketball and tennis courts, and as you see here, baseball fields with these cool sculptures for decoration, along with batting cages. And here we get to the good stuff, mini golf, looks nice. Also you have an indoor ice ring, well two actually and a giant indoor pool along with a fitness center. Next to it, you could get a glimpse of the Children's Safety Town, an educational place for kids on traffic safety, like driving cars or biking. This, I really think, is a fantastic idea. Therefore, there are lots of things to focus on, and maybe in the future, we will once again revisit this park, but what I want to focus on in this video is this section right here. In it, you have the Memorial Plaza, a place which honors the memory of the deceased, not just of wars, but also of other causes as well. At first glance, this area is not that tremendously big, but it is packed with various memorials and markers, and therefore I will not look at every single memorial here. However, I would like to show you some of them in order to give you a sense of this location and hopefully interest. I visited this place recently, however, I will also show you some images from when I visited back in the summer of 2023. And as you see here, it has beautiful flowers, floating water, it is just a peaceful place which creates an atmosphere of reflection. Here we have the John F. Kennedy Memorial, honoring the 35th President of the United States, who was assassinated in Dallas, Texas in 1963. Next to it is a memorial dedicated to dead children, a beautiful statue of an angel of hope. You know, the older I get, the more I understand the pain and, and anger of losing a child. My heart goes out to all parents who had to go through that. This right here is a monument to murdered victims. It's interesting, once in a while I teach a course about ancient civilizations, 
and I always get the same questions emerging. For example, why should we study this? Why should I care about something or someone from two or even three thousand years ago? And well, this inscription right here reminds me of one of the answers I give. To live in the hearts of those we love is to never die. One of the oldest pieces of writing that we have comes from Mesopotamia, modern-day Iraq, and it's called the Epic of Gilgamesh, a king of the city of Uruk, and it dates back to, well, close to 4,000 years ago, really the beginning of writing itself. And it is a story about Gilgamesh realizing his own mortality and goes on a quest to gain eternal life. Even though he comes very close in achieving it, at the end he was not able to do so. The story ends with him going back to his city and building up the city walls and sort of showing off the greatness of his city. Essentially this story playing around with the idea that the only way to live truly forever is through the memory of others and what you were able to accomplish. Hence, people from four, even three thousand years ago had the exact same problems and dilemmas and thoughts that we have today. What is the meaning of life? Is there eternal youth? You know, these things are fascinating to me and to see how people in different cultures try to address these questions. Next to it is a monument dedicated to those killed by drunk drivers. And I'll be honest with you here, this probably is one of the most powerful sculptures here, at least to me, because it really shows that pain and anguish of losing someone. There is that saying that sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words. I think this is a great representation of that saying. The Comfort Women Memorial, honoring over 200,000 women and girls across Asia who were taken and used for sex by the armed forces of Japan throughout the 1930s and 40s. Brick 26 Monument, representing bricks that some participants carry in race challenges in order to raise money for veterans. By the main street, we have the Junior Firefighters Memorial, which is for youth who support the first responders. And on the opposite side, we have the Firefighter Memorial dedicated to those firefighters and volunteers who died in the line of duty. There are also some smaller dedication plaques and markers which can be easily missed as you walk by. For example, like this one here dedicated to cotton victims, remembering thousands who died with the German invasion of Poland in 1939, beginning of World War II, but also something which many times people forget, the Soviet invasion of that country from the other side on September 17th less than three weeks later, and eventually capturing and executing more than 20,000 people in places like the Cotton Forest. Or this one, reminding of the Holodomor, which took place in Ukraine in the 1930s. It was a man-made famine under the leadership of Joseph Stalin, which killed millions of Ukrainians through starvation and something which I guarantee will continue to play a role in the Russian-Ukrainian politics with the war taking place right now. Here we enter the Veteran Memorial, where we have a monument for prisoners of war and those missing in action, with also a powerful representation right here on the side. This is the Walls of Honor, where thousands of names are engraved of active or deceased veterans. And along these paths, there are many monuments dedicated to various wars, like the Korean War or the Vietnam War. This one, to Vietnam, is an interesting monument with the engraving, All We Ever Had Was Each Other. 
Vietnam was a messy war for the United States and it was really fought in a context of a Cold War and the prevention of Soviet influence in Asia, as well as the prevention of communism from spreading, just like the Korean War a few years prior. However, it quickly became unpopular with the American public and hence veterans came home to anti-war rallies and protests instead of having a sort of hero's welcome. One of the reasons for the difficulty America faced was the fact that they were engaged in guerrilla warfare, fighting in tough terrain. In guerrilla warfare, a small group or even an individual will set up traps or attack with an intent to kill or harm and then simply run away. Hence, it's very difficult to fight an enemy like that. Another issue was the terrain itself. Fighting in jungles proved difficult because not only did it give the enemy a unlimited place for booby traps and hideouts, but also it was difficult to land and operate helicopters, which was essentially the backbone for the American military. Hence, America used something called Agent Orange, a herbicide used to kill vegetation to clear areas. Here, you have a monument for those who died due to exposure to this as it contained a toxic chemical and therefore its production ended in the 1970s. Here in the center we have a sculpture I showed in the opening of this video, an iconic photo of six US Marines raising the American flag on the island of Iwo Jima in 1945. The capture of this island witnessed one of the bloodiest battles in Marine Corps history. When I visited this park in 2023, they were to install a new monument dedicated to soldiers killed in Afghanistan and Iraq, and it is finally opened, a new addition. However, there are many other monuments to a variety of branches and groups like the United States Navy Armed Guards, the Merchant Marines, or Combat Wounded. And here we also have those serving on submarines. This here is a standard World War II torpedo with a weight of about 3,000 pounds and about 650 pounds of explosives. But I love the fact that many groups were not forgotten who are not mentioned too much but play a fundamental role in wartime, like the military doctors, nurses, and all those working in the medical field, the nurse corps, and even war dogs. That's right, many people do not realize how of an important role dogs play in war. For example, in World War I, dogs would perform all sorts of activities, like pulling machine guns and other firearms, hunting for rats in trenches, um, delivering messages, finding wounded soldiers, assisting medics in carrying medical supplies, detecting explosives, or simply providing comfort to the soldiers. And as we come down the steps, we come to the lake, where we have the 9-11 memorial. Here you see the representation of the two twin towers, that used to dominate the New York City skyline? I mentioned earlier that Eisenhower was the first Supreme Allied Commander of NATO, an organization which at its core has Article Number 5, an idea that an attack on one is an attack on all member countries. Interestingly enough, Article Number 5 was only used once in NATO's history and it was not during the Cold War. It was used for the first time, and only time, right after the terrorist attacks against America in 2001. So that's an interesting history on its own. On the other side of the lake, not only do we have the memorials that we just took a look at, but also the Lakeside Theater, where various activities are organized, like summer concerts, for example. But just walking around this lake is a very relaxing experience and whenever I get the chance, I like to come here and it's sort of like that moment of reflection for me among all these memorials. It, it makes me realize how delicate life is, how 
fragile it is. Whether war or disease and sickness, like you see here, one of the plaques is dedicated to breast cancer, something on which my mother passed away. And so I look around and it is just a moment that keeps me grounded of how thankful we should be for what we do have, whether it's health or family, everything that we take for granted each day. Life is so busy and we always tend to focus on what we did not do, what we did not achieve, what we want, but we should always focus on what we do have and those around us. So it's just my moments of reflection that I do around this lake or nearby in the rose garden, which is beautiful in the summer or spring and it honors the donors. Or you can always just also relax and watch the ducks or turtles as they navigate around the lake as well. I hope you enjoyed this video and I wish all of you a safe week and until next Sunday when I will meet you again in another New York City location. Take care everyone.